This can be the most important video you have ever seen in a while. People often think that they are emotionally mature, but in reality, they are nowhere close to being called mature. This video will help you analyze your maturity based on nine parameters. This will help you take better decisions in life and radiate the positivity of maturity to those around you. So let's proceed to understanding the domain of emotional intelligence. Do you often find yourself pondering why some individuals are better at dealing with life's hurdles than others? Or why some manage to stay calm and composed during high-stress situations while others seem to fall apart? Could it be that they possess a higher degree of emotional maturity? Emotional maturity isn't solely about how many years you've lived or your intelligence quotient. It's about comprehending your own emotions, responding to situations in a manner that befits them, and understanding when and how to disengage. Emotional maturity is essentially a major ingredient for leading a harmonious, fulfilling life. In today's video, we're delving deeper into the concept of emotional maturity by exploring nine ways to assess your own emotional maturity levels. We'll provide you with a comprehensive understanding of each point, backing up with scientific evidence, real-life examples, and practical tips. So, stay glued as we unravel. Are you as emotionally mature as you believe you are? Be ready to challenge yourself, reflect on your emotional responses, and perhaps learn something new about your emotional landscape. Kicking off with our ninth point, self-awareness. This term is often underestimated, yet it commands a significant position as a pillar of emotional maturity. Self-awareness can be defined as the capacity to recognize, comprehend, and acknowledge your own moods, emotions, and driving forces, and also the impact they have on those around you. Developing a heightened sense of self-awareness empowers you to discern precisely what you're feeling and reasons behind those sentiments, effectively handing you the reins to control your reactions. At this point, you might be pondering, how does one measure their level of self-awareness? Well, a straightforward approach is to maintain a regular journal. This doesn't just mean jotting down events of the day, but also writing down your thoughts in detail, your emotions in those moments, and your reactions to various situations. As time passes, and the pages of your journal fill up, you'll start to notice recurring patterns. These patterns can serve as a mirror to your emotional responses, helping you understand better how you react to different stimuli. In addition to this, another proactive step is to seek constructive criticism from trusted individuals in your life. This could be anyone, your parents, friends, mentor, or even a therapist. Their external perspective on your actions and reactions can offer a fresh viewpoint and potentially identify blind spots in your self-awareness. It's essential to remember that self-awareness isn't a destination, but rather an ongoing journey of self-discovery and growth. It requires persistent effort, patience, and a willingness to introspect and learn. So ask yourself, are you conscious of your feelings? Are you aware of how they shape and dictate your actions? If your answer is affirmative, congratulations. You are well on your way towards a heightened level of self-awareness and ultimately, emotional maturity. Moving on to the eighth point, empathy. This isn't merely about feeling sorry for someone or offering hollow condolences. It's about genuinely understanding others' feelings and perspectives, immersing yourself in their emotional state. It's about stepping into their shoes, not just superficially, but delving deep into their psyche and seeing the world through their unique lens. Emotional maturity isn't a standalone trait. It's deeply intertwined with empathy. It's the ability to resonate with others, to find common ground even in disparate experiences. Consider this scenario. You're in a bustling cafe amidst the clatter of coffee cups and the hum of chatter. The barista serving your coffee seems off perhaps even curt. Instead of instantly criticizing for their lack of cheerfulness or rushing to take offense, you pause. You consider they might be having a rough day, grappling with personal issues or merely battling fatigue. You offer a comforting smile, an understanding nod, small gestures of empathy can lighten their burden, or visualize another situation. You're spending time with a friend who seems unusually quiet with their silence ringing louder than their words. Instead of brushing it off as a mood swing or being too engrossed in your own thoughts, you offer a listening ear, a comforting presence. 
You invite them to share their thoughts, their fears, their dilemmas. Empathy doesn't equate to becoming a problem solver. It's about acknowledging their feelings, validating their experiences, assuring them that it's okay to feel the way they do. It's about demonstrating that you're there for them, not just in times of joy and laughter, but even when the skies are gray, even when the storm hits. Empathy is a powerful tool. It isn't a sign of weakness, but strength. Empathy strengthens relationships, fosters understanding, and promotes emotional health. It bridges gaps, dissolves differences, and fosters a sense of unity. If you can understand, resonate, and share the feelings of others, if you can empathize without judgment or prejudice, then you might be more emotionally mature than you realize. Empathy is the cornerstone of emotional maturity. It's the ability to look beyond oneself, to embrace diversity of thought and emotion, to truly care for others. We're diving deep into point number seven, resilience. This quality, resilience, is the capacity to bounce back swiftly from adversities. It is a vital hallmark of emotional maturity, reflecting a well-developed emotional quotient. This ability isn't about not feeling pain or avoiding life's many curveballs. Rather, it's about how you pick yourself up and navigate through these challenges. Are you the one who stays firm under pressure or the one who stands tall after a setback? Here's an analogy to consider. Imagine life as a spirited game of dodgeball. The game, much like life, is unpredictable and at times you might be caught off guard and get hit. And sometimes the hit comes hard. But the essence of the game isn't about how many times you're hit, it's truly about how many times you can back up. The same principle applies to life and that shows resilience. That's a display of emotional maturity. To evaluate your own resilience, try to delve into your past experiences. Reflect on a time when you were caught in a difficult situation. How did you react? Did you lose hope and surrender? Or did you muster the courage, dust yourself off and try again? Remember, being resilient doesn't mean nullifying the impact of the blows or denying the pain. It signifies your ability to recover from them and keep propelling. If you're able to bounce back quickly from setbacks, you're exhibiting signs of emotional maturity, a quality that sets you apart. Next on our list at number six is responsibility. This concept stands as a cornerstone of emotional maturity, and it is the ability to own up to your actions. It is about acknowledging that you are the author of your own life story and taking responsibility for your words and deeds. Let's illustrate this with an example. Imagine a common inconvenient scenario. You've inadvertently spilled coffee on a colleague's important report. Do you quickly attribute it to the chaotic environment of the office or do you accept your mistake and offer to help rectify the situation? Perhaps offer to reprint the report or propose to help in redoing the work that was lost. Now, consider another situation concerning deadlines. Suppose there was an instance when you missed a crucial deadline. Would your immediate reaction be to point fingers at external factors like unexpected workloads, inefficient co-workers, or a sudden illness? Or would you introspect and acknowledge that you could have managed time more efficiently, perhaps by prioritizing tasks better or fine-tuning your work process? In both these scenarios, the path of responsibility is the emotionally mature route. It's about realizing that every action you take has a ripple effect, impacting not only your life, but those around you as well. It's about stepping up and saying with conviction, yes, I did this, this is my responsibility. But don't forget, with responsibility comes immense growth. It's a golden opportunity to learn from mistakes, to hone your skills, and to prove that you are capable of handling the peaks and valleys of life. Taking responsibility for both your actions and their repercussions is an unmistakable sign of emotional maturity. It shows that you can face challenges head-on with grace and resilience, which is a crucial trait for personal and professional success. We've now reached the halfway mark with point number five, open-mindedness. An open mind can be likened to a formidable fortress, but one where its gates remain unbarred and unguarded. This notion symbolizes emotional maturity, a state of readiness to embrace change, and a keen willingness to entertain new ideas. Let's paint a picture. Suppose you're in a conversation where you're passionately explaining your favorite hobby, something that the other person has never experienced or tried before. 
How would an open-minded person react in this situation? They wouldn't dismiss it outright. In fact, they demonstrate genuine intrigue, posing thoughtful questions, showing a desire to delve deeper. They may even consider stepping out of their comfort zone to give the hobby a try themselves. However, open-mindedness isn't a trait restricted to hobbies or activities. It stretches far beyond extending to personal beliefs, values, and worldviews. It encapsulates the ability to share a table, a conversation, with someone who holds a completely different perspective from yours. In such instances, instead of resorting to arguments or getting defensive, an open-minded individual listens, actively, attentively. They seek to understand, thereby fostering personal growth through the exchange of ideas. Open-mindedness is a journey. It's the audacity to challenge your own ideas, to test your assumptions and biases. It's the humility to learn from others, to admit when you're wrong. And it is about your will to grow and adapt. Emotionally mature individuals embrace this journey. They remain open, receptive to new ideas, perspectives, and experiences. They value diversity and understand that there's always something new to learn from everyone they meet in every situation they encounter. Moving on to our fourth point, the powerful trait of adaptability. Picture yourself in this scenario. You're a ship, the captain of your destiny, sailing through the vast open sea with nothing but the endless horizon in sight. Suddenly, the tranquil waters turn tumultuous as a storm hits out of nowhere. The skies darken, the waves grow bigger, and panic sets in. It's unexpected, it's unpredictable, it's life. What do you do? Do you surrender? Let the storm overpower you and sink? Or do you change your course and steer yourself to safety? Therein lies the critical question, doesn't it? Being adaptable is all about displaying flexibility in the face of change. It's about adjusting your sails to meet whatever wind blows your way, be it a gentle breeze or a tempestuous gale. It's the ability to change direction on a dime without losing sight of final destination. Adaptability is about embracing new ideas, new experiences, and new ways of thinking. It's about opening your mind to different perspectives, allowing them to shape your thoughts and actions to better suit your current predicament. It's about turning your sight towards change, not as a looming threat that shakes you to your core, but as an exciting opportunity for growth, development, and evolution. Adaptability, my friends, is a distinguishing feature of emotional maturity. It's a telling sign that you can handle a plethora of different situations, that you are capable of coping with the unexpected, and that you are skilled in navigating life's unpredictable waters. It highlights that you're not rigid in your thinking, but rather flexible and open-minded, able to bend, but not break under the pressures of life. Moreover, adaptability is a glowing testament of resilience, a symbol of strength, and a beacon of courage. It showcases your capacity to recover quickly, to withstand adversity, and emerge stronger on the other side. So keep this in mind the next time life decides to throw you a curveball, catch it with your well-trained hand of adaptability. If you can show the world that you're adaptable and flexible in the face of change, you're demonstrating more than just survival. You're demonstrating a high level of emotional maturity, a trait that will serve you well in every aspect of your life. Let's delve into our third discussion point, patience. A seemingly simple trait that's often easier to preach than to practice, patience. It's not just about waiting, it's not about merely sitting by the bus stop, waiting for your ride to arrive, or standing by the coffee machine, waiting for your morning brew to be ready. Rather, it's about maintaining composure, keeping your cool, even when the world seems to be conspiring against you, testing your every nerve. In an instance where tension is escalating and the stakes are soaring high, it's all too easy to lose control, to let your emotions step into the driver's seat and dictate your actions. But this is where the virtue of patience makes its grand entry. It's about quieting that internal tempest, managing the swirling whirlpool of your emotions, keeping them in check, and not letting the outer commotion and chaos interfere with your inner tranquility. To help you visualize, imagine this scenario. You're stuck in the middle of a peak hour traffic jam. The honking horns, the glaring headlights, the impatience of your fellow drivers, it's all very tempting to honk back to let your frustration pour out into a cacophony of noise. 
But what if, instead of succumbing to this frustration, you choose to take a deep, calming breath, switch on some soothing music, and choose to wait patiently? This, dear listeners, is the pure essence of patience. It's not just about the act of waiting, but rather it's about how you... It's about staying calm, composed, and collected, even when facing the storm of adversity head-on. Patience, my friends, is more than a simple virtue. It's the backbone of emotional maturity and a key aspect of an evolved, well-rounded personality. Moving towards the second point, we delve into the realm of communication. In the context of emotional maturity, communication takes on a profound depth. An emotionally mature individual is proficient at verbalizing their thoughts and feelings, but that's only the beginning. They go beyond merely relaying thoughts into the space, but are masterful in breaking down complex emotions and thoughts into understandable and relatable formats. The importance of listening is another crucial aspect of communication that they appreciate. It's not just passive listening, empathetic listening that they practice. They don't just hear the words spoken, but feel the emotions behind them, offering an understanding shoulder and open mind. It's a two-way street where they are not only the speaker, but also the receiver of thoughts and emotions. Their communication style is infused with a high degree of clarity, ensuring their message comes across as intended, without any ambiguity. Respect forms an integral part of their communication. They honor the other person's perspective, creating a safe space for open dialogue. Emotional consideration is another hallmark of their communication style. They tread gently, keeping in mind the emotional state of the listener, creating a sense of comfort and mutual respect. This emotional consideration helps to alleviate misunderstandings and promotes more meaningful dialogues. Being aware of the when is also a crucial attribute. They know when to express their thoughts and when to hold their peace, striking a balance between self-expression and thoughtful silence. They also understand how to do both, effectively transitioning between speaking and listening without causing disruption or discomfort. They use their words as tools to build bridges of understanding and empathy, not of confusion or conflict. Their communication style fosters connection, understanding, and mutual respect, leading to healthier and more fulfilling interactions. It is. It is often observed that good, effective communicators exhibit a high level of emotional maturity. Their communication skills are a testament to their emotional intelligence and their ability to navigate complex emotional landscapes with grace and understanding. And now we've arrived at the pinnacle, the number one point, acceptance. This isn't just a sign of emotional maturity. It's the crowning glory. Acceptance is about more than just tolerating or enduring who you are. It's about embracing and celebrating every aspect of your being. The quirks that make you unique, imperfections that make you human, and the strengths that make you resilient. Your emotions, too, are a part of this acceptance, both the ones that bring you happiness and those that bring you pain. It's about recognizing that these emotions, regardless of their nature, are a part of you. They make you who you are and have shaped your journey life. But acceptance doesn't stop with us. It's a principle that extends to those around us. When we talk about accepting others, it's about recognizing and cherishing them for who they are. It's about understanding their unique outlooks, their diverse experiences, and their own emotional landscapes. This acceptance does not demand us to concur with everyone's thoughts or views. Instead, it's about valuing their individuality and respecting their personal journeys. Acceptance is a powerful tool. It allows us to traverse through life with a heart ready to embrace everyone and a mind open to new experiences. It's what enables us to establish genuine relationships, to grow and evolve as individuals, and to foster a deep sense of empathy and compassion. Moreover, Acceptance is about letting go of our judgment, of our preconceived ideas, and embracing the elegance of diversity and imperfection. It's about appreciating the beauty that lies in all our differences and the richness that this brings to our lives. Acceptance thus forms the backbone of emotional maturity. So, let's take a moment to reflect. How did you fare against these nine indicators of maturity? 
Assess yourself on these parameters and try to improve in the areas where you are lacking. Also, emotional maturity is much more than these nine points. It is a very subjective topic and cannot be contained in one single video. So sometimes you must trust your intuition and wisdom while you are considering the domain of emotions and maturity.